Hi, welcome to this video focusing on uh, damage diagnosis. After an introduction, we will look at the basics uh, of damage diagnosis uh, and uh, then all the different activities involved. So visual inspection, testing and monitoring, modeling, and finally, we will draw the main conclusions. Damage can be seen as the final result or the end product of a damaging process induced by an occurrence of an event. So as you can see from this slide, we have a triggering phenomenon, which we can call event, which activates a damaging action or damaging mechanism that is carried out by a damaging agent. Now, the damage action then results in an end in uh, in an ending uh, in an end product which is called damage of course this is uh, just a simplified schematic overview of how damage is 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 created but we have to imagine in reality that uh, the end product is, of course, the result of multiple damaging processes, uh, some ongoing uh, at the same time, can be also, um, therefore, the product of multiple, of multiple events. Um, therefore, let's keep in mind uh, the fact that, uh, unfortunately, in the, uh, in, the, in the real life, of course, it's never so simple. But this is important to understand which are the different uh, aspects or the different elements that we should be looking at um, when understanding and explaining why a damage is created. Of course, in order to give a sense to um, the explanation of damage, in order to be able to comment what are the damaging processes and events behind the visible uh, manifestation of damage, we need, first of all, to gather a lot of information about the manufacts that we are analyzing. So gathering information, it is really a central uh, activity that supports the mapping of cause-effect relations among actions, damage mechanisms, and then damages themselves. Of course, the fundamental information that or the data sets that we want to be looking at um, in, uh, in, uh, for analyzing the damage is the historical evolution of the object of, or the building, for example, the, the survey of the dimensions. So the geometrical properties and the morphology of the manufact. What are the material properties, uh, the different material composition of all the uh, structural and non-structural components? Of course, the damage survey or the condition assessment of the building. And finally, what is the structural behavior? Of course, this is just trying to define in general terms what are the main categories of information um, required for, for the diagnosis of damage. So going deeper into the different activities that need to be carried out, um, we have, um, first of all, like documentation activities. So detailed documentary research is required. This is, of course, one of the uh, first steps, or it is part of the preliminary uh, information required uh, for um, explaining the uh, damage, the causes of damage. So we need to collect drawings, photos, evidence of alteration throughout or restorations throughout history, technical, old technical reports. So whichever, whatever information might help us in uh, uh, in uh, understanding better the uh, past behavior. Uh, of the building and also whatever information helps us in understanding uh, the different materials, the geometry, the alterations. Then 
Another fundamental step is the visualization, the visual inspection. So inspection, of course, is um, one of the most important and basic step. Uh, usually, is carried out by professionals or skilled and trained uh, teams that in situ try to identify damage and provide all sorts of information um, that can be useful for 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 understanding uh, the damage. Then we have testing. So the third step is testing. Testing can be done in situ. So during the inspection, usually, or it can be laboratory testing. So by collecting samples during a visual inspection that can be tested later on in the laboratory. Um, then we have monitoring. So monitoring is usually uh, related to the continuous measurement and or monitoring, of course, of, of, of important parameters of the buildings. So this can be related to environmental parameters, can be related to the structural behavior of some specific building components. Um, and of course, monitoring is used for damage assessment, modeling, and intervention evaluation. So finally, modeling. Modeling is um, val validated and updated using field data and helps understanding the behavior of damage. Of course, all these different activities are relevant and important for uh, to um, damage diagnosis. Of course, whether we carry out all of them or just some of them and to which level of detail we carry out each of them depends on many different parameters. So mostly uh, the um, ac accuracy accuracy of the um, uh, diagnosis that we need, and of course, the availability of resources. So we, we talk about that most of these um, steps or activities are very uh, resource consuming. So let's look one by one at the different activities. So the visual inspection, as I said before, visual inspection is, is, is really the basic prer prerequisite for an effective building maintenance. And it, it, it constitutes in the recognition of main factors affecting the building. For example, external actions or, or effects uh, or damages. Um, the main scope of the inspection is to check the building for problems and then to assign to each problem uh, an action. So visual inspection uh, can be carried out um, using different tools. So once on site, it is important that all the information we can gather at that moment, we do. So photo, photos, videos, audios. The, so this is simply done today with the uh, mobile phones that we have at our disposal. Sketches, drawings, um, for example, of some specific uh, uh, um, room layout um, or help uh, help uh, with sketches in understanding where the photo was taken or the video was taken or where the damage is exactly on which component in a room um, use or filling in inspection forms so usually um, there are available um, many different inspection forms for example some specific uh, um, authorities local authorities or some National Heritage Institute might have a specific inspection form to be used, which was developed by professionals. So it's important, of course, also on site to fill in the forms and then measurements. So whatever measurement is, is relevant, uh, it can be about the geometry, it can be, for example, in this slide, you see um, picture 
um, showing what can be the different uh, um, thickness of, of a crack and so on. So condition survey of historic buildings necessitates a series of information concerning the historic research, geometric typology, previous intervention, construction techniques, use materials, and then damage assessment. Usually the visual inspection is carried out uh, um, according to some rules. So it's done from the outside, starting outside the building, look at the general site conditions inside, moving inside, and usually starting from the top. So if the roof is uh, accessible, going down to the bottom. So this is just a, a standard procedure. And it is also important to know what is the workflow uh, in, in before going to side in a way that we can have maybe a pre-made uh, kind of structure of a report that help us in uh, um, having a list of things we don't have to forget. So talking about one not to forget on the list, we can say that, of course, we have to start from the inspection of, this, of the site as I said before, then look at the roof, the chimney, and the gutters, walls, plasters, and decorative features uh, of the interiors, the joinery, the, carpent, uh, the carpentry work, windows, doors, attic, cellar areas. So basically on site, we are there to make sure we know what are the present condition of the building, what are the damages, which can be the actions that can be carried out immediately, for example, to stop a leakage and so to prevent further damage, some sort of emergency um, repair work and so on. This is the visual inspection. Moving to the next activity uh, concerning damage diagnosis, um, we, we can speak about testing. As I said at the very beginning testing, we can distinguish between in situ or laboratory tests. Tests are usually oriented to identify material composition, what the, the existing alterations, the working stress levels, uh, material properties, soil, soil foundation properties, damage distribution, and, and so on. So with the testing, we can really um, try to evaluate different uh, aspects of the building and uh, the material and the component components. We can distinguish uh, between three categories of testing. So we have testing based on non-destructive techniques, minor destructive techniques and destructive techniques. Of course, these three categories are self-explanatory. And uh, of course, when dealing with cultural heritage, the minimum impact, the minimum intervention or the minimum impact of testing is of uh, paramount importance. So non-destructive techniques, when possible, are preferred with respect to the other categories. Of course, moving to the destructive te techniques that can be taking samples, for example, of uh, a masonry um, to be tested in laboratory, sometimes are needed in order to um, assess and evaluate in a, a reliable way, uh, for example, me mechanical properties of the material. So sometimes, um, the other more invasive techniques are preferred um, in a way to sacrifice a bit the uh, conservation, but increase the uh, reliability and the accuracy of data um, gathered. So let's look, because we said that non-destructive techniques are the most relevant for cultural heritage um, or the preferred techniques. So let's look at the main principles be be behind these uh, techniques. So we have um, techniques based on sound. So for example, uh, ultrasound, like physical stress waves going through the material and measuring 
the uh, effect on the waves um, due to the uh, uh, going through the material, penetrating radiation, so attenuation, attu attenuation sorry, of a beam of particles. Then we have optical uh, methods, so uh, infrared, ultraviolet wavelengths, for example, thermal infrared thermal uh, thermo camera are usually used for thermal uh, tomography. So understand uh, by looking at the distribution of uh, surface temperatures, we can understand uh, where it can be, for example, some uh, um, material heterogeneities, where it can be some voids, where it can be some detachment, for example, of plasters, where there can be some moist areas in, in a wall. Then we can have the electromagnetic methods. So based on electromagnetic waves going through the material. So as the ground penetrating radar, for example, is a typical uh, technique used in, uh, in story buildings. So let's move to the other step, which is monitoring. Continuous static monitoring consists uh, in the measurement of gradual variation of a wide variety of variables of the building. Um, so we can apply a number of sensors at critical locations on the structure and look at, at how the parameters change over time. So we can have look at the environmental parameters, so temperature, humidity, wind parameters, and how this change. Um, so this can help understanding what is the response of, of a specific component, for example, to, um, to temperature or to wind uh, or to humidity. Um, then we can have we can have a structural look at the structural parameters. So in this slide, you will see an example of uh, crack uh, monitoring. So look at how the uh, crack opening um, uh, varies throughout time, throughout different seasons. And so with uh, changing temperatures and humidities and so on. So look how uh, the crack opens and closes. Um, measure displacements, measure deformations, measure stresses and so on then we look we can look at the modeling so modeling um, contemplates and simulates all the aspects that influence structural response of a building so geometry and morphology material properties and external actions structural evolution building and soil interaction so there are different methods we can use um, uh, in modeling. So there is there is finite element methods, for example, macro modeling. This is a very powerful powerful tool for understanding the global system behavior and damage of complex heritage construction instead of, of structural details. And then there are the other there are other methods. Other methods are used for uh, detailed uh, knowledge of structural components. For example, uh, micro, uh, micro, uh, mod, uh, micro modeling, uh, fiber modeling, and so on, or when um, we want to reduce computational con costs. So for simplified, we can use simplified methods. So rigid or deformed macro elements method, discrete element method, method and, and so on. So here again, we have a different um, tools that we can use. And usually it's the professional that needs to decide which level uh, of, of detail needs to be achieved. And uh, what is also the important importance of, of, of a component. So if one simplified method is applicable, or rather a much more detailed method is, is, is needed. Of course, this influences, uh, influences the um, um, consumption of resources. 
In conclusions, we um, can say that diagnosis aims at determining uh, cause effects. So what are the events and the damage, damage mechanisms that are uh, triggered by the events and how this cause then um, the uh, damage, the end product. Data gathering is uh, crucial for diagnosis. So we need to have a lot of information about the building, different aspects in order to be able to make conclusions of what uh, are uh, the cause effects um, going on. And this is usually done uh, through different activities. Uh, so we looked at the visual inspection, testing, monitoring, modeling, but also the initial documentation and so on. Another important aspect that we have seen is that the um, ac accuracy uh, is resource dependent. So it's up to the professional to decide and basically design which uh, activities and to which level of detail the activities should be carried out. Thank you for your uh, attention.